Welcome everybody. So what we're going to be studying today is how we can use thirds with algebra. Now remember, thirds is just a fancy word for using a root or a square root in a sum. Now we have three rules to do with thirds, which we need to be careful to remember because the three roots, the three rules aren't in the log tables. So our first rule is the square root of AB is equal to the square root of A times the square root of B. The second rule is the square root of A over B is equal to the square root of A over the square root of B. Our third rule is, if we have a fraction involving a third, where a third is part of the denominator, part of the bottom of the fraction, we don't like to use that going forward, so we have a rule to rationalize the third. So we take the bottom, we change the sign in between, and we multiply top and bottom by the rational of the root. So if we look here at example one, it says express 80, root 80 in the form of a root five, where a is an integer. And we remember that an integer is a positive or negative whole number. So if I'm doing this, I'm going to look at root 80 and think how many fives go into 80. Well, there's 16 fives in 80, so we have 16 times 5, which means I really have root 16 by root 5. So root 16 gives me 4 times root 5, so root 80 is really 4 root 5. Now this is an important skill to know, because if we want to add or subtract constants involving integer or constants involving thirds we need to make sure that the third is the same so the next one we're going to look at is example two here which says express four minus root five squared in the form b plus c root five where b and c are elements of z now we remember that z stands for integer which again is a positive or negative whole number so we shouldn't have any fractions or decimals as our answer and we know that squared means to multiply by itself so that's really 4 minus root 5 by 4 minus root 5. So now I'm going to split my brackets and multiply. So I have 4 by 4 minus root 5, minus root 5 by 4 minus root 5. So now we have 4 by 4 is 16. 4 by minus root 5 is minus 4 root 5. Minus root 5 by 4 is minus 4 root 5. A minus by a minus is a plus, and root 5 by root 5, my roots cancel and leave me with the number underneath, which is just 5. So now we know we can add the constants together, so 16 and 5 gives me 21. When adding roots, we need to make sure the number under the root is the same, and then we just add the constants in front. So minus five, 4 minus 4 is minus 8 root 5. And we know 21 and minus 8 are both elements of z because they're positive whole numbers. Right guys, take a second to go back over these two examples and then we're going to move on to example three. So in example three, we're looking at using thirds and fractions. Now what I'd see from this fraction here is if I have root three, I know three goes into 27 and it also goes into 12. So these two thirds can probably be simplified down to root three. So root 12 is really four times three, which means it's really root four by root three, which is really two root three. On the bottom here, I have root 27, which is the same as having 9 times 3, which is the same as root 9 times root 3, which is really 3 root 3. So now I'm going to take these two thirds and sub them back in. So root 12 is really 2 root 3, all over 5 root 3 is still the same, minus root 27 is really 3 root 3. So now I can see I can subtract them on the bottom to give me 2 root 3, over 5 take away 3 is also 2 root 3 and then 2 divided by 2 is 1 root 3 divided by root 3 is 1 so my overall answer is just 1. In part 2 I have root 13 and root 11 on the bottom. Now both of these are prime numbers which means the thirds cannot be simplified and if they can't be simplified we need to use a method called rationalizing the denominator which is where we're going to multiply top and bottom by the inverse of the bottom which means if there was a minus here, I'm now going to have a plus in between the two thirds. On top, we can just put them into brackets. So we have 7 by root 13 plus root 11, all over root 13 minus root 11 by root 13 plus root 11. So on top, I'm going to leave them in brackets because it's just a constant on the outside and hopefully it might cancel eventually. But on bottom, I'm going to split the brackets and multiply which means I'm going to have root 13 by root 13 minus root 11 by a plus root 11, sorry, yeah, plus root 11 by root 13 minus root 11. 
and now we multiply out the bottom. So on top I still have 7 by root 13 plus root 11. On bottom, root 13 by root 13 leaves me with 13. Root 13 by minus root 11 leaves me with minus root 13 root 11. Plus root 11 by root 13 gives me plus ele uh, root 11 root 13. Plus by a minus gives me a minus and root 11 by root 11 gives me 11. So on top I still have 7 root 13 plus root 11. On bottom I can now say that my minus root 13 root 11 and my plus root 11 root 13 are going to cancel. Which leaves me with 13 minus 11 which is just 2. And so this guys is my final answer. Or it can be written as 7 over 2 by root 13 plus root 11. But both are completely acceptable. Okay, so take a minute, go back over the video, try a few questions, and let's move on. Thank you.